Good morning. This is week 10, day 1, 2024. Let's pray. Gracious God, we ask that you would indeed help us to be filled with the knowledge of your will, that we might walk in a manner which is pleasing to you. Help us to know how to do this and to walk in this way uh, as you speak to us through your word and through the working of your Holy Spirit. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul mentions that he and the others have never ceased to pray for the church there in Colossae. And the prayer they're offering has a particular amount of content. They pray that they would be filled with the knowledge of God in his will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. <coughs> this notion that they would not just know about God, uh, that they would not just know who he is, that they would not just know what he's done, but that same knowledge would be something that they could apply to their lives, hence that, that notion of wisdom. And oftentimes, you know, the word know in the Old Testament is used about a personal scale type of knowledge. Uh, to know somebody is not just to know about them, uh, but to have a relationship with them, where you can say, I actually know this person uh, because I have spent time with them. I can tell you, uh, you know, what their faults are, what their strengths are, uh, what their reasoning skills are like, or any other number of uh, thoughts you might have when it comes to knowing somebody and knowing them personally. And this prayer for knowledge is to result in something else. The seeking after God, uh, let's say, to know about him from a, well, theological perspective, is never meant to simply be an end in itself, to come along and say, look at how much I have learned, look how much I know, uh, but we are meant to do something with what we know. And so there is always supposed to be, if there is a growth in knowledge, a growth in obedience, a growth in, okay, I know this to be true. Now, what does that mean for my life personally? Or what does it mean for our life as a church corporately? So I want you to be filled with knowledge so that the purpose statement here, you might walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, pleasing to him. The goal is to have this knowledge, this wisdom, this spiritual insight, so that we can walk in a manner worthy to God, something which is pleasing in his sight. And you might think, well, that's all well and good. Uh, how do we do that? And that's exactly what Paul continues with. How do we walk in a manner worthy of the Lord? These are what we call the, the means statements that he has here, the means of accomplishing what he has set forth uh, as the call on our lives. We do it, uh, you can think about this as inserting the word by, when you're thinking this through, by bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. And then, verse 12, giving thanks. We seek to <clears throat> live a life that is pleasing to God by, first and foremost, seeking to bear fruit in every good work. You find that 
uh, reference, as we've talked about recently, spread throughout the New Testament. You have uh, Ephesians chapter 2, the works, the good works that God created ahead of time for us so that we might walk in them. There it is. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now you have this notion uh, of let us consider, we read in Hebrews, how to stir up one another to love and good works. This is all of this notion of bearing fruit. How do we live in such a way that we are practicing the doing of good works to one another? I was recently listening to Sinclair Ferguson uh, preaching on 1 Peter chapter 2. And he made a, a really insightful point that when you read the New Testament, the key component of the church's witness to the wider world was this pervasive love for one another. The culture saw there in the church something they did not see in the wider world. This picture of whether or not we are doing good to one another witnesses to the world. That whether we believe what we say we believe or whether we are simply going through the motions of that belief. And if we wish to please God, we will seek to bear fruit. We will also seek to increase in the knowledge of God. Now, again, always read these things in context because this increasing in the knowledge of God comes from his power, his might. Uh, that as we gain an understanding of God's purposes, for instance, we might have endurance, as he talks about here. That we might have patience, perhaps even mixed with joy. Paul alludes to this elsewhere when he talks about, in particular, Romans, of the present-day sufferings not even being compared to the weight of the glory that awaits us. That we live in light of that eternity, and that is where our endurance comes from. That's how we can be patient. And even having joy in these things, but we also recognize, as he writes in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all of this kind of stuff. I can be patient and I can endure because it is God who equips me for that endurance. I have learned to be content. It's, it's not a, a sudden, oh, I get it and now I can do it. There was a period of growth, a period of learning that he mentions there when he talks about, but so we too. Uh, should seek to increase in knowledge and understanding that it can apply to our lives. We walk in a manner worthy of the Lord by giving thanks. We have no end of finding reasons to give praise and thanks to God. But of course, the, the main focus and what's foremost here in this line of thinking is the gift of eternal life and being transferred, being brought, being delivered, being rescued, being liberated from the domain of darkness, uh, the road leading to destruction, and being brought over to the kingdom of his beloved son, the place of redemption, the place of grace, the place of forgiveness, the place of sharing in that inheritance that is the sons as the father as the son of the father 
So <clears throat> as you, uh, you kind of mull over on, on this text today, or maybe you've picked a different text altogether, uh, you can pray uh, for the church to be filled with knowledge. You can pray for the church to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, pleasing to him. And you can pray that God would help you to do that, uh, that you could find steps to take uh, to bear fruit this day, a step you can take to increase in knowledge and take time to give thanks to God. Let us pray for these things now. Gracious God, we do ask that you would indeed help us as your people uh, to know, to grow, to bear fruit, uh, to have a desire uh, to know you better as we ought, and pray that you would help us to be a people of thankfulness uh, who recognize the joy and who recognize uh, the greatness of the gift that you have offered to us in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.